Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.1. In this video I'm going to cover the state API as part of Sugarcube 2.0. While functionality like the engine or the story API give access to what the engine is doing, its status, or at a moment in the history of the story, and with the story API, information about its passages and itself can be retrieved, there's also the state API, which is a little different and overlaps sort of. So the state API gives access to everything about the current moment in a story. For example, is our history empty? Well, it's not. We're technically at the second passage. What is the current passage's name? Well, it's all about the current. What was the last passage's name? Well, it was start. And how many moments have we passed so far? This is technically our second. We're in our second passage. We can also, and very importantly, gain access to current and temporary variables as part of state variables and state temporary. And we'll see that when we look at the code. But as demonstrated here, we can say what's the value of some var one, and it's this, and some var two, it's this, and the temporary var, another var, is this as well. And it'll make a little more sense when we look at the code. Finally, beyond the history, so whatever the current status was, the name of the current passage, the previous passage, and the variables, as we'll review when we look at the code, state also gives access to the pseudo random number generator functions of state init prng and state random. Now, here's a special note here unless state init prg is called, state random will use the built in math random that's part of JavaScript. And so, why use state's random function if we can already use math's random function? Well, it's both more random and more predictable. The reason you would want to use a pseudo random number generator is to give an initial seed value that's predictable across different testings. If you use a random number, for example, from math random, you would get a uniform random number. If you wanted a seeded random number so you could continually test something using that random function's uh, results, you would it would be so much easier to test that way because then you could just give it the number five for example as initial seed and test everything that occurs with five and know that the randomness is working instead of getting a uniform random number every time and in fact if you don't care about any of the math involved you can just use state random and it doesn't matter that much but if you really care about trying to get pseudo random number generator sugarcube has supplied that for you so you initially call state initialize prng and it'll make more sense when we look at the code and then state random after that but again if you really don't care you can just call state random it will call math random and you won't lose too much and in fact here are just two different random numbers generated by the built-in maths random and then states random and of course because they're different numbers they are two random numbers between zero to one inclusively so let's go look at the code for this so the start passage again points to different links for documentation for the corresponding API for the engine story and state and points to the passage all about the current. All about the current starts to actually get us information about the state API. And in this, this case, we can look to see if the history is empty and it's not. This is similar to the way the engine API allows us to go to different points in time. We can go backwards or forward using the backwards or forward functionality as well as using the offset and go to functionality as part of engine. However, state doesn't actually move through time. It's about the current moment. So we need to know is the current history empty and which the, this function does. And in fact, it wasn't when we looked at it because we were two passages in. It can also give us the name of the current passage. Notice state current returns a passage object and its title gives us the name. The same with the last passage's name, state bottom, and its title. There's also state top, which gives us the least recently used instead of the last passage's name. And think about it sort of a stack of these names from bottom to top. We can also see how many moments, or if you want to think of them as turns, have passed at this point, and it was two, and we had at that point reached the second passage, or the from start all the way to current, all about the current that is, and so two. So as I mentioned, 
when we looked at the example, we can access the variables as part of state anywhere in the story. This also allows us to intermix JavaScript if we want to do different things by assigning, by retrieving and assigning, getting and setting if you prefer to think about it that way, the values that are in the variables that we can use within the macros in SugarCube, also in JavaScript. Now the reason why this is important is that using these normal just macro calls, in fact using the set macro to store the value of some variable here to this string, as we've got three examples here, two variables and a temporary variable, would not normally be accessible within JavaScript. However, using the global state API and the variables attribute, we can access anything using the dot notation. So some var one with a dollar sign within a macro becomes state variables dot sum var one without the dollar sign and access in that way as part of the state variables construction. Same with here, sum var two. And again, this allows us if we want to intermix these things by calling this or changing this value using JavaScript instead of using macros within SugarCube. It's a little more advanced technique, but is incredibly helpful. The same with temporary variables. In this case, another var. Notice temporary set with an underscore accessible through state temporary. And again, its really main use is for intermixing with JavaScript where you wouldn't normally be able to access those values, except now you can through state variables and state temporary. Finally, as I discussed in the randomness, we have access to different random values. Math random, as I said, the normal built-in JavaScript way of using uniform random values, and state random, which if seeded, gives you a seeded random value for its pseudo random number generator. Now, the only sort of caveat I want to mention here is I mentioned you need to use, if you want, to set it up here. Well, if you set it up in any other thing, Twine's going to warn you that it's an error, and you need to set it up either within the story init passage, previous to all other passages, or part of the JavaScript that's part of the story. To do that, if we want to put it in the story JavaScript, remember we click on the name of the story, as I just did, go up to Edit Story JavaScript, and add it as I did here. And in fact, this gets run before anything else. So it initializes our pseudo random number generator to some random seed and allows us to call four passages in, states random, and then uses that seed value to produce a pseudo random number. Again, <laughs> if it's more complicated than you'd like and you just want a random value, you can use math random in the same way or use the random function that's also part of SugarCube to get a random number. As the same way, random being an alias to math random, which are uh, two states random, which is an alias to math random. And in fact, you can just use this or use this in the same way and get a random number if you don't really care that much. <laughs> but again, the state API, which differs from the story API, which gives us information about the story and its passages, or the engine API, which gives us access to information about the story in its history, the state API is about the current moment. So again, we can get access to the history, to the current passage, the last passage, the where we are, how many moments have passed, as well as, as I said, and sometimes more importantly, variables as well as, as well as temporary variables. Again, using either state variables or state temporary to access that information. And finally, if we really care that much about it, we can see it as pseudo random number and use the random number generator that's part of SugarCube as well. But this is an example of using the state API in a number of different ways. Like I said, getting information about the current moment, which is different than the engine API, which is sort of about the past or the history of, a, of the story, or the story API, which is about information about the contents of the Twine story. So it's passages or uh, it's title information like that. But thanks for watching.